it's Clara from AccuPro Academy and thank you for being here. This course is all on the foundation of Chinese medicine, especially the five element theory made easy. Because after all, my goal is to empower you to achieve superior patient care and for you to grow a successful practice while having fun. I know you're already a TCM rock star. So I made this course on the five element theory made easy just in case you needed to review, enjoy it again, and go quickly through this amazing theory that actually is one of my favorite lectures. So enjoy this course and let's get rocking using TCM. So the five element theory, obviously the five elements are fire, wood, earth, water, and metal. And really in Chinese medicine, they are used to explain the properties of the organs they are related to, their mutual relationship and pathological changes. They also are substances we cannot live without. Food depends on water and fire, fire to cook it, water to grow it. Production also relies on metal and wood. And of course, earth gives birth to everything. So the five elements are essential to our being. So let's see what does that look like in Chinese medicine and how we are relating the five elements in nature to our body and the way everything functions. So the five elements are, as I said, fire, earth, metal, water, and wood. What we're going to look at first is what we call the generating sequence. The generating sequence goes this way. Fire generates earth, which means that in order for earth to grow plants and food, we need heat, we need the sun. So if someone lives in Iceland, they don't have a lot of sun, they definitely cannot grow a lot of food. That's why they have to import vegetables and fruits in their country, right? So we need a lot of heat or sun to grow food. But at the same time, if there is too much, then that might actually burn it and then we can't grow anything either. So it's all about balance. The whole five element theory is all about balance. So we definitely need fire or heat to grow food. We need to have earth generating metal. So the way earth generates metal is actually, I don't like the word metal. I think the translation is not the best from the Chinese text, but Metal actually represents minerals, minerals such as calcium and magnesium and zinc and potassium. So of course, all those minerals come directly from the soil, from the food that earth can grow for us to enjoy. So earth actually generates really good nutrients, really good minerals, and that's where we can found calcium and magnesium. Does that make sense? Okay. Metal generates water. So that's the same idea. If you look at rivers around, and some rivers are very copper looking like color, a lot of them have iron in them. Uh, a lot of water is made, well, most water, but some water are made of more potassium or more sulfur. Some water are very sulfuric, right? Depending where the river is or where the waterfall is or where the water is. So water is made of mineral. Uh, in general, we have salty water, we have water that's high in zinc or magnesium. So that's how it's found in nature. Of course, we need water to generate wood or to generate plants and trees. I live in British Columbia, Canada, and in the Vancouver area, we have a lot of green trees because it rains a lot. <laughs> so a lot of water grows beautiful green trees and plants. And of course, wood generates fire. We put wood on the fire to grow fire. So if you've ever been camping, you know you need wood to create fire. So that's the way it's represented in nature. Now let's look at what does that mean when it comes to the body. Wood element is related to the liver and gallbladder in Chinese medicine. The fire element is related to the heart and small intestine. Earth relates to spleen and stomach. Metal relates to long and large intestine. And water element relates to kidney and urinary bladder. All right? We call the sequence, the generating sequence, the mother-son relationship. So the mother-son relationship means that the mother generates a baby 
a son. Obviously, a mother can have a daughter as well. But this is a yin yang balance, right? A mother is female, a son is male. That's balancing the yin and the yang. So a mother gives birth to her son and she generates a good, healthy baby. So if you look at, for example, the spleen and stomach, which is the earth element, the spleen and stomach in Chinese medicine really represents our digestive system and how it's functioning. So in this generating sequence, the digestive system or spleen and stomach themselves will generate good baby or they are the mother of the metal element or the lung and the large intestine. So again, spleen and stomach are the mothers or is the mother of metal, which represents lung and large intestine. So if the mother generates the son, it means that spleen and stomach, if they are healthy and in balance and strong, will generate a good lung and a good large intestine, and those two organ systems will function properly as well. So that's how the five element generating sequence occurs. So I'm going to give you an example. If the lung and the large intestine in Chinese medicine are related to the immune system, because the lung is in charge of the defensive chi, the wei chi, the immune system. It's a big barrier that stops invaders, such as viruses and bacteria and pathogens from entering the body. The large intestine, in Western sense, we have our flora, our good bacteria that lives in our large intestine to defend our body against the bad bacteria. Those are the probiotics that are in our large intestine. So the lung and large intestine are related together to the immune system when we think about it that way. The spleen and stomach are in charge of the whole digestive system. So what it means is that in TCM we say a good digestive system will generate a good immune system. And it's easy to understand. If someone's immune system is always low and they're sick all the time with all the colds and the flus and they catch all the viruses and bacteria out there, their immune system is low. We understand that. But what's the reason? What's the cause? Why is the immune system down? So what the five element theory helps us do is figure out where it all started. Where was the beginning? So if this person's diet is not very good, they don't have good nutrients, good mineral and vitamins, and they don't eat a good diet that the digestive system can transform into nutrients to generate a good immune system and a good defense system, then the person's immune system is going to be depleted. So this is the mother-son relationship. The spleen and stomach is the mother, and in order for the baby, which is the long and large intestine, to be healthy, the mother needs to feed the baby. So if someone's immune system is very low and very depleted, is the cause the fact that this person's diet is not good and the nutrients absorption is not good. Then we need to do what we call tonifying the mother. So again, the earth is the mother, the sun is the metal. So if the immune system is depleted, of course we're going to tonify the immune system, but on top of it, we will have to tonify, strengthen, and balance the digestive system as well. So we need to tonify the mother, which in this instance is the digestive system or spleen and stomach system in TCM. Does that make sense? Okay. Now let's talk about another example. The wood element or liver gallbladder, uh, the liver can be affected by a lot of stress. So if someone is on a lot of stress, they're going to feel all tense, all tight. So shoulder tension, maybe tension headache, temporal headache at the end of the day. It's going to definitely affect their irritability. They're going to be impatient and short and frustrated very easily. So the stress will basically create some excess in the liver organ system. So maybe we're going to have liver young rising. Liver young rising is a TCM pattern in diagnosis. That just means that the liver gets some heat, really being affected by heat that rises, like a volcano effect. So it's kind of like the volcano, right? We're bursting, someone pushing our buttons, stressing us, stressing us, stressing us. Eventually, we snap and we start being irritable or we yell at this person and then we get red and then we get 
temple headache at the end of the day and tension and our shoulders are rising up to our ears and everybody's super stressed and tight and tense. So that's an excess condition for the liver. And so generally, because the liver or the excess liver in this case is going to generate problem with the baby, which is fire or heart, what's going to happen is if you put too much wood on the fire, right? There's a lot of wood, lots of wood, excess wood. We're going to have massive fire, like a big massive fire. We don't want massive fire because that destroys everything. We just want a balance of heat, but not too much fire. So because the heart in Chinese medicine is related mostly to the mind and falling asleep and staying asleep and sleeping activities, if the liver is super stressed, super excess, volcano effect, right? Really tight and irritable. Eventually, what's going to happen, it is going to create too much fire, or too much activity for the heart to mind, and we're not going to be able to sleep. So this person's going to be awake usually between 1 and 3 a.m. because that's liver time in Chinese medicine. So if that person is up all the time at that time and they cannot fall back asleep, then there's an issue. Okay, so what we're going to do then is that if there is an excess, we're going to sedate the sun. What it means is that if there's an excess of liver being all stressed, definitely we're going to sedate or calm the liver. We have to and de-stress the person. But we're also going to calm the heart, mind, so the person can fall asleep. So we bring the fire down. We take care of getting rid of the excess fire so we don't have a forest fire kind of thing, right? So that's exactly how we do treatment in the generating sequence. We look for what is the root of the problem, what is the cause, and then we will basically treat the affected mother if it's a deficiency or son if it's an excess. Let's look now at the controlling sequence. So we have another sequence in the five element theory and in nature it would be that fire controls metal, metal controls wood, wood controls earth, earth controls water, and water controls fire. So let's start with this one because that's very easy to understand. In nature water controls fire. If there's too much heat, too much fire, if we have water to calm it down, then there's a balance, right? We don't want to extinguish the whole fire. We want to just bring it down if it's too much. Also, wood controls earth. In nature, it's basically if you have a, a, a slope, like a mountain slope, if there's a lot of trees, specifically strong rooted trees, they will prevent the mountain from sliding and creating mudslides. So usually mudslides happen in region or area where there's not strong wood and trees with lots of roots, okay, because they cannot control the earth and mudslides uh, occurs. Earth controls water. That's usually the earth is controlling the river banks, right? If earth cannot control water, then the water rise, rise, and we have a flood, and it goes over the banks of the river. So the idea is the earth controls the water in general, and hopefully it can control it. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense. In nature, every element control each other. It's a whole balance. There is no uh, break into the balance, and if there is a break into the balance, then something is not properly functioning. Okay, so let's look at what it means when we come to TCM again. So the same elements correspond to the same, obviously, organs. So when something is out of balance, like I said earlier, we usually say the controlling sequence is now damaged and not working properly. So there is an over-controlling, sometimes called overacting. So let me give you an example. So for example, wood the green, right, is controlling earth. And we've talked about the trees being strong and rooted to control the earth from sliding, for becoming mudslides. Well, in Chinese medicine, when we come to liver, again, remember the liver is the stress guy, the guy that's tense and irritable and super stressed out and, you know, temporal headaches and it's just really, really a tense, I guess, right? So when someone is super stressed, super tense and irritable, it is sometimes, instead of just controlling, it's going to over-control, overact on the earth element. And the earth element is the digestive system. The spleen and stomach represents the digestive system. So someone that's really stressed 
and is really irritable and, and tense will over control often and create havoc on the digestive system. So if someone comes and sees me and the problem is they have heartburn all the time or acid reflux, right? Or uh, they feel like they have a stomach pain all the time or nauseated. And I look at the diet and the diet is pretty good and there's nothing that should create all this havoc on the stomach. Then it's looking at the five element theory to look at what started all this up. And eventually we can figure out that the liver which is stuck and stagnated and tight and tense, is overacting, over-controlling on the stomach, making the stomach rebel and go up into acid reflux, into nausea, maybe sometimes even vomiting, okay? Or sometimes it's the opposite. It affects more the spleen or the lower part of the digestive system. And when people have bloating, loose stools, uh, being fatigued, not being able to digest food properly, lots of cravings, specifically craving for sugar and sweet, it could be that every time this person is stressed and tense, the liver, again, is going to over-control the spleen and make the spleen out of balance or deficient or create havoc into it, okay? So that's an example of over-controlling an element. It's quite common to have that happening. I'll give you another example. Um, if the heart is in charge of the sleep, right? And the mind and the sleep and the mind is racing and someone cannot sleep and they're not sleeping at all. So what's gonna happen is you're up all night, you're just on fire, you're just like not able to sleep. Eventually, instead of controlling metal or controlling the immune system, you overpower it, over controlling, over act on it. And what's gonna happen is the immune system is gonna be depleted. So remember what we talked about someone's depleted immune system. And we said in the generating sequence, it could have been that the spleen and stomach or the digestive system is not giving nutrients and nourishing and generating a good long and large intestine immune system. That was the cause. Well, in this instance, if someone comes in with low immune system and is sick all the time, and you found out that they're not sleeping, but they're eating really well, then the broken balance is between the fire and the metal or the heart and the lung. So that insomnia, which affects the heart mind, creates the overacting and makes the lung and the defensive and the immune system depleted. So the cause is the sleep. So if we address the sleep, then the immune system will come back up, hopefully. Obviously we can strengthen the immune system, but we also need to always address the root cause. In this case, it would be the heart, mind, or the insomnia creating the low immune system. Does that make sense? Woohoo! Okay, so now let's look at the last five element theory sequence, which is called often the insulting sequence. And the insulting sequence, if you see all my little arrows, the red arrows there, is the opposite of the over-controlling sequence. So the over-controlling sequence is an out-of-balance sequence. The insulting sequence is also out-of-balance, and it's the opposite. It insults back. It pushes back. So metal, instead of being controlled or over-controlled by fire, basically fights back. So metal insults fire. Wood insults metal. Earth insults wood back. Water insults earth and fire and salt water. So this is the opposite than the, the controlling sequence. And let me give you an example in nature. In nature, earth is usually, we said, controls water so we don't have flooding and we don't have the bank of the river over flooding. Well, this is exactly what happened when water insults earth. A tsunami, for example, like Katrina or the one that happened in Japan, all those tsunami or the one in Thailand that happened in the last decade, all those tsunamis that basically takes the water and goes over the earth and create catastrophe and a lot of casualties and damages is water insulting earth. So that would be what happened, obviously, in nature. Of course, 
Fire insulting water is a common one because when there's a lot of fire or forest fires, it really insults the water, basically dries everything and creates a havoc and damage on the whole area and there's no more water, right? It just basically kills everything on its passage. So in the insulting sequence, we understand that's out of balance. Now let's look at the organs that are affected and what we see in clinical practice mostly. So in clinical practice, one uh, sequence that's very common is heart or fire, basically insulting water. So when someone's mind is racing and they have what we call often heart fire, they are very, they have high blood pressure, they are red faced, they are always uh, irritable, but they're very uh, restless. They cannot sleep, they're restless body, restless mind, and they feel hot all the time. And what happened is obviously they can't sleep very well at all. They probably don't sleep at all. And the kidney system in Chinese medicine really relates to the aging system, the reproductive system, the birth, the, the growth, the development of a person, but generally our DNA, the root of who we are, and specifically the way we age. So that's the kidney system in TCM, the best representation as uh, an example. It's not only that, but it's an example. So when we don't sleep and there's hard fire and we're not sleeping for days and weeks and months and we have high blood pressure, of course we're going to age faster. It is going to insult our aging system and deplete our kidney system in TCM and age us faster than we're supposed to be. So that's what's going to happen, right? There's always an element that's going to affect another one. Can you have two elements affecting something? Absolutely. Can you cross sequences? Absolutely. You could have, for example, a sequence that starts by the person is super stressed, which affects the liver. The liver overact, over control, spleen and stomach, making spleen and stomach deficient. So the digestive system is deficient. And this person generates an immune system that is going to be low and depleted. Because of course, if spleen and system is spleen and stomach, sorry, are not functioning properly, then the baby, which is long and large intestine, would not be functioning properly. So yes, when the immune system is low, is the cause this just the digestive system or does it come from the liver gallbladder overacting on spleen and stomach? And that's the culprit. So yes, we can have more sequences interacting. Does that make sense? So we have all those sequences and it really helps us identify where it all started because the root of the problem is what we want to address in order to get a better outcome for our patients. Now, the last sequence I want to talk about is often not in books. In some books it is, but often it's not taught enough in schools, in Chinese medicine school, which is too bad because that's one of my favorite five element sequence, which is the cosmological sequence. So if you're not familiar with this, stick with me. It's a great sequence. So as you can see here, I have the cardinal directions, right? South, north, east, and west. If you're used to look at a map, a direction map, the north is always on the top. The south is in the bottom. The west is on the opposite side of the east from my picture here. So my picture is the same as a map, but it's upside down. So no matter what, if south is that way, north is the other way, east is there, west is there. If you flip it and put north in the top and south in the bottom, then west and east is flipped as well. So I'm just mirroring a directional cardinal direction in the other direction because it is going to be um, something that we use in Chinese medicine for also treating patients. So let's look at how this starts in TCM. What we usually say with this sequence is that spleen and stomach or the digestive system is at the center of everything. It's the center of our health. And we understand that if we don't have a good diet, everything else is going to be affected. At the east part of our body, or east is often represented by where the sun rises. The sun rises, everything grows, everything starts which liver and gallbladder is really related to the spring. When everything starts, everything grows, right? Everything is kind of like green. So 
In Chinese medicine, the long and the large intestine, because it's related to the fall season, which is everything kind of finishes, and at the fall season, everything is going kind of into winter, into the darkness, into the cold of winter. So usually, long and large intestine is represented by the west or the sunset, right? We're going into more darkness. Now, south is fire, right? The heart is represented by fire element. The fire element is going upward. That's why this heart is up and not down, and the south is up, because fire goes up. And the sun in the most young, hot part of the day is at noon when heart, meridian, and system is the highest in its representation. From 11 a.m. to 1 p.m. is heart, uh, organ, and system. Okay? North is represented by the cold, the water element, which is kidney and bladder. So the water element, water goes down. That's why we put north at the bottom. Water goes down, fire goes up. And water is much more cold in nature, specifically, right? So it is going to go down and it is going to be representing by north or nighttime or darkness, which is much more yin in nature. So as I said, east or spring... And birth and sunrise, all the beginning starts with liver and gallbladder, okay? Compared to the West, where fall is happening and we have harvest, it's the end of collecting all the fruits and vegetables, and the sunset occurs. With South, again, it's bright, it's hot, it's up, and it's summer. Compared to North, it's cold, it's dark, and it's winter. So that whole sequence here is going to help us, again, figure out what's out of balance. And if there is an issue that starts with the digestive system, it will affect the immune system, which is the West. It will affect the liver, gallbladder, specifically for menstruation, for example, for women for menstruation, because the spleen and stomach are in charge of transforming and transporting nutrients into producing blood for liver to store blood for the menstruation. And if there's not enough blood, liver cannot store for menstruation or reach for joints, ligaments, and tendon to nourish those with blood. Then, if the digestive system is not properly working, our mind, our heart mind, is not going to be able to focus, to retain information, and we're going to start having difficulty in memories, difficulty in paying attention, and sometimes not able to sleep as well, specifically if we have a big meal before we go to bed. Also, the spleen and stomach represent the digestive system. And if we're not having a good, healthy diet for years and years and years and years, eventually we're going to age our kidney system. We're going to age our body faster than it's supposed to. We're going to get diabetes by the time we're 40, right? That's ridiculous. So spleen and stomach and the digestive system really represents the center of our health. And often looking at the sequence, we could see that there is a disconnection between south and north, specifically if the diet is not properly um, a good diet. So this is an interesting sequence. I actually love this sequence and the way it works, and it explains how everything works in Chinese medicine. Now I'm going to finish off with the table, the five element table. So the five element table has representation in corresponding areas that we have to, in TCM, usually memorize. But I think it makes sense a lot of time for some people when we look at the table. So the yin organ, which are much more higher in function, are the liver, heart, spleen, lung, and kidney. And their corresponding organ is the young organ, gallbladder, small intestine, stomach, large intestine, and bladder. The season is, just like we talked about in the sequence before, would correspond to spring or liver gallbladder with everything starting birth and beginning. Summer of our lives is when we are in our 20s and 30s and it's fantastic and we have lots of fire in us. Fall is the fall of our lives. I'm in the fall of my life right now. Everything starts to dry up, people. <laughs> and in the fall, the leaves dry up and they fall off, right? And in the winter of our lives is when we are older and we aged and we are in the pretty much the end of this life, right? 
the earth is representing by between seasons. So it's usually representing in between all seasons, between spring and summer, summer and fall, fall and winter, winter and spring. And those two weeks of change of season get affected or are affecting the digestive system. So it's really important to feed our body good food, specifically at the change of season. So now let's look at the senses. Liver gallbladder or wood element relates to the eyes. So if someone has issue with like night vision, uh, seeing spot, floaters, that's a usually a problem with the wood element or specifically the liver. The heart or the fire element corresponds to the tongue, specifically for speech. When someone is anxious or has panicky attack, maybe they can't speak, right? They feel stuck. They're like, oh, I can't, I'm so nervous. And that's very much the case often. The earth element we present or correspond to the mouth. Specifically, that's where the digestive system starts. It's at the mouth. So if there is issue with the mouth, specifically like maybe too much saliva, like drooling on the pillow in the morning, or having dry mouth, or having canker sores in the mouth, there is a problem with the earth element or the digestive system. The lung and large intestinal metal elements specifically uh, correspond to the nose. So if we have a post-nasal drip or our nose is always stuffy, then there's an issue with that element. And a lot of my patients have issue with stuffy nose or post-nasal drip in the fall time much more than the rest of the year, which is very interesting. And kidney or water element is corresponding or re represented by the ears and the hearing. So as I said, the kidney system is our aging system. A lot of time when we get older, what happened? What? <laughs> we can't hear. We lose our hearing abilities. Um, the tissues. So the tissues are corresponding. The wood element correspond to tendons, ligaments, joints, which is the sinews. The fire or heart corresponds to blood vessels. The earth corresponds to muscle. The skin is related to metal and the bones to water. So. The way we look at this is if there is a lot of, let's say, carpal tunnel syndrome issue, and this person also has floaters and spots and issue of the eyes, then there's definitely a liver, TCM liver system problem. That's giving us clue of what's going on. If someone has skin issues, like a lot of acne, is this that the long and large intestine are not properly functioning to clear the skin? But remember, the mother of metal is earth. And maybe the skin is not good because someone's diet is not good because it generates an issue with the immune system. So it's looking at this. The bones, of course, we understand. As we get older, our bones get brittle and a lot of people get osteoporosis, right? Colors. Ah, the colors. So green represents the wood. It's the green wood outside the trees. Red fire, of course. Earth is represented by yellow, metal by white, and water is represented by black. So those are going to give us clues, those colors, on observation. Part of TCM diagnosis is to observe people. But also, we're going to talk about food in a minute. So for observation, if someone has red face, they have too much heat or too much fire in the body. If someone has dark black circle under their eyes, kidney water is affected. Does that make sense? Okay, but it also corresponds to food as well. So sour taste corresponds to liver, bitter to heart, sweet to earth or spleen and stomach, pungent spicy to metal, and salty to water or kidney. So usually green sour food like a Granny Smith apple is really, really good for liver or yellow sweet food. So when I talk about sweet, I'm not talking about sugar, I'm talking about food that is sweet in nature, like a sweet potato is a yellow sweet food. And it's very good for the spleen and the digestive system because it's easy to digest, it's very mushy. Spicy food, right? So we talked about spicy food, but also white looking food inside. So inside, I'm not talking about the outside, but if you look at white, food inside is really good for the lung. For example, pears and apples that are white inside are very good to um, help the lung, but also pungent or spicy food like cinnamon and ginger 
very good to address when we have a cold or something that's affecting us with a bacteria. Salty food definitely comes from water, right? We usually salty food like seaweeds and anything that naturally has iodine comes from seawater. Does that make sense? Okay. Emotions. Okay. The liver gets affected by anger. Remember the angry drunk? People that drink too much? Yeah. So someone that's irritable or angry, the liver will get affected. Someone that's joyful, my heart is full of love, I'm so happy, my heart's so happy, that's a emotion of the heart. But a lot of time people say, well, I don't understand, isn't that a good thing? It is a good thing, but sometimes people get excited all the time. My husband gets excited all the time. The problem is when you're excited all the time, you don't sleep. You're so excited all the time, you feel restless and excited, you can't sleep. Like you're going to Disneyland, woo! Right? That's that kind of thing. The worry over thinking definitely affects the digestive system and can create havoc on it. Sadness and grief um, affects the lung. And that's easy to understand. When people cry, they can barely breathe, right? It's like, <gasps> right? They're crying and they can't breathe. So that really affects the lung. And fear and shock affects the kidney specifically. You know if someone is very fearful, let's say someone put a gun to somebody's face, God forbid, um, they will basically urinate in the pants, right? That's very common. Uh, a lot of animals, my dog, every time he's scared, he pees, right? This is very common for fear. Shock can age us 10 years in one night, right? A shocking news or a shocking trauma event will deplete our kidney and specifically age us faster. So hopefully I explained that properly. Now let's look at the weather element. Would correspond to wind, fire to sun and heat, earth to dampness and wet, metal to dryness, and water to cold. Okay, so that's the cold element versus the hot element, fire, water, we understand that. Metal is more dry, earth is more damp, and wood correspond to wind. So let's say someone comes and sees me and they have dry skin, they're very pale, very white. They have a lot of depression and sadness. And all this is amplified in the fall. Well, I have to look at what's going on with the lung and the large intestine, the metal element, what's going on there. Or if someone's always worried and overthink, doesn't have a good diet, and on top of it has muscle weakness, it's got no strength. They feel like their muscle are 200 pounds, super heavy, they can't take a step forward then we have to look at spleen and stomach and the earth element. If someone comes in and they're older, or not that much, maybe they're in their 40s, they have osteoporosis already, uh, they're constantly, constantly in fear, they love salty food, and they hate winter, they're always cold, kidney issue, system, kidney system, TCM kidney system, right? So that's how we put it all together. I hope that was useful. That was my five element theory made easy for you to enjoy. If you want more, go to acuporacademy.com. I got tons of courses in there, tons of resources with PDF and videos and pics. Like you can have a lot of fun to review or reinforce your TCM skills. Also, make sure to like the page I have, which is on Facebook, Acupro Academy for sure. Tons of great posts and videos every day that I create myself from scratch and I get shared a lot. So thank you for all of you that keep sharing and liking my post. I am so thankful for this amazing TCM community. Have a fantastic rest of your day and as usual, keep rocking it using TCM.